Hi, my name is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to Real Hi-Fi. Today's episode, another highlighting of a component that deserves to be highlighted for both performance and price. I'm talking about the RME ADI2 DAC FS, digital to analog converter and really more, which currently sells in the United States for $1,299. But before I go further, let me say that we've written about this twice on the Soundstage Network last month, January 2023 on SoundstageHiFi.com. Matt Bonaccio wrote an extremely thorough review. If you can get through it all, it's got all the detail you could ever want. And then again, this month by James Hale in his Art Plus Tech column on Soundstage Experience where he mixes equipment and music. Both of those write-ups have links to the measurements from the Soundstage Audio Electronics Lab, which are, like Matt's review, super exhaustive. They're done by Diego Estan, and you can see everything about its measured performance there. Now, the ADI-2 DAC FS is billed as a digital-to-analog converter, and it is that. That's its core function, digital-to-analog conversion. But it has so many features, so many, in fact, I can't possibly describe them all here, or this'll take 25 minutes of video time, but luckily, Matt, did. So go read his review on soundstagehifi.com. But I want to highlight a few. There's the front panel volume control, which operates in the digital domain. But it, with the analog outputs on the back, XLR balanced and RCA single-ended, means this can become basically the pre-amplifier for an all-digital system. These are super high quality outputs. They can drive any amplifier to full volume with exceedingly low distortion and noise. See those measurements. But I say all digital because there are no analog inputs on this, so it's not really an analog or true preamp. But all digital system, hard to beat. Bass and treble controls, as well as you get into the on-screen menu option, there's balance, there's even a parametric EQ. There's even the ability to run this software that RME has that analyzes music streams. Go see their website for that. It also has the headphone outputs, and I have a story about this one in particular that I'll get to in a second. So yeah, it's a digital to analog converter, but it's a really full featured one. But all those features aside, as a digital to analog converter, that's it. Up to date and first rate. On the back side, you'll find USB, RCA coaxial, and Toslink optical digital inputs. It supports PCM up to 768 kilohertz, and it supports DSD as well. It has onboard user-selectable digital filters, and its measured performance is exemplary. Ultra-low distortion and noise, really the hallmark of this whole unit. Excellent jitter rejection, meaning it should be rather source independent. If you buy it for just conversion, that's it. No other features. You won't be overpaying. In fact, you might be underpaying compared to what other more expensive digital converters can do in terms of comparable performance. But what if you want to use more of its features, such as these headphone outputs? You are not being shortchanged or getting an add on thing. The headphone amplifier in this unit is amazing. And let me tell you the little story about that. If you go look at the measurements Diego created on this unit, you'll see possibly a little asterisk beside the signal to noise ratio on the IEM output. I say possibly because if you look at this in the future and it's not there, it's because he's found a workaround. But as I'm talking about this now, what has happened is, it appears that the noise from this unit is lower than that of our Audio Precision APX 555B series analyzer, which is state-of-the-art in terms of audio analyzers. What that means is the noise he measured is actually the noise of the analyzer, not of this unit, which could be several dB lower. So right now he's trying several things to be workarounds to kind of ascertain what the possible noise performance is from this unit. But what we do know now, it's at least as low as the audio analyzer is and possibly lower. So you're getting headphone outputs with unbelievably low noise and sufficient power to drive basically any headphones on the market. You can't ask for much more than that. As for its other features, well, 
Whether you use them or not, that's really up to you. The volume control, the bass and treble controls, balance, parametric, EQ, they're all there. They all work as advertised. Ideally, they're not cheap throw-ons. They all have a useful purpose, but whether you want to use them or not, that's really up to you. Just know this is much more than a digital to analog converter. It has unbelievable features at the price or at multiples of the price, but you don't have to use them all if you don't want to, and you won't be shortchanged on the core performance if you don't use them. None of them degrade the unit's main purpose, digital to analog conversion. But like anything, you can find flaw with it. Now, like I said, it doesn't have analog input, so it can't be a true preamplifier, but it does have both single-ended and balanced outputs to drive any amplifier out there, and these are ultra-low distortion as well, basically near the threshold of the audio precision. It's also not the most impressive looking device. Now, you don't expect much more for the price, but I say that because this performs at such a high level, you could put it into a system of any cost as a digital to analog converter or headphone amplifier. But let's face it, many audiophiles, I like to say, buy hi-fi, buy the pound. They want a big, case. They want to impress their friends and say, oh, look at my digital to analog converter that comes in a case that's, you know, this big, even though there might be a board this big inside. But they want to show off their component. And, hey, it's made in Germany. It's made well. It's sturdy. But it's not going to impress anybody with its size. So it looks its price. But performance-wise, that's a different story. When it comes to low distortion, sheer transparency, a lack of coloration, passing the signal through. It's kind of without peer. But that also brings us to potentially another problem. And that problem is that some audiophiles like components that have a sound. Add a euphonic distortion, some coloration, a roll off, what have you. And by the way, this will give you a roll off on one of its filter options. I should note that the NOS option, which means non oversampling, has a pretty severe roll off in the high frequencies, so you could hear that quite easily. But in terms of its standard settings, it's going to let music through uncolored. And like I said, some audiophiles like coloration. Even though they're trying to hear more into the recording, at least that's what they claim, they like a euphonic sound. It depends what you're going for. Are you going for sheer fidelity or are you going for a sound that pleases you? This one is about sheer fidelity. And what I mean by that is ultimate transparency, high resolution, let all the details flow through, no colorations, none of that. That's what this gives you. So, depending which side of the fence you're on, you'll see that as a bonus or a flaw. All told then, who the ADI-2 DAC FS is for is for the audio enthusiast who wants the ultimate in transparency. Sheer clarity, ultra low distortion and noise. They wanna hear everything basically untouched. That's who the ADI-2 DAC FS is made for and that's who I made this video for. So if that's you, check out Matt's review, James's write-up, my write-up. All the links are below. It's a world-class performer in a modest package and for a very reasonable price. I hope you enjoyed this content. Subscribe if you like it. See you next time.